today we are going to talk about uh, different types of shock the causes of different types of shock the clinical presentation of different types of shock and the treatment options that is available for all the types of shock so far which we have discussed so we have discussed all these types in detail now we are going to summarize them and basically we are going to differentiate them we are going to tr uh, differentiate them with some clinical sign symptoms now the first type of shock which we are going to consider is the hypovolemic shock now hypo means low and volemic means volume so this type of shock uh, is a type in which there is less volume or due to loss of volume so the this type of shock is basically caused by hemorrhage blood loss dehydration which is due to fluid loss and it is also caused by burns which also leads to plasma loss now due to plasma loss fluid fluid loss or um, blood loss there is intense vasoconstriction there is intense vasoconstriction that is something which we have discussed in detail that why this occurs it is because the body is trying to compensate and to correct the shock no so due to the intense vasoconstriction there is decreased blood flow to the peripheries so the skin is cold and clammy and similarly due to decreased volume the amount of blood that is returning to the heart is very low the volume of blood that is returning to the heart or the amount of blood on which the heart is pumping is very very low and this is known as the pcwp pulmonary capillary wedge pressure or preload pre so preload is the amount of uh, fluid or the, the the load on which the heart is acting which is very low in a hypovolemic shock which is caused, caused by hemorrhage blood loss or dehydration or burns now the cardiac output is also very low is the, the fluid is low the volume of the blood is low the returning blood is low so the cardiac output the amount of blood that is pumped is also very low but to compensate that as we discussed there is intense vasoconstriction intense systemic vascular resistance there is constriction which leads to systemic vascular resistance or afterload so there is increased afterload or there is high pressure against which the heart has to pump so in this type of shock there is cold and clammy skin due to vasoconstriction and there is loss of blood there is due to which there is low, decreased preload and decreased cardiac output but there is vasoconstriction which causes increased afterload and the treatment option is basically iv fluid now in hemorrhage blood should be replaced whole blood can be given in dehydration iv fluids or plasma can be given or dextrin can be given as we have discussed in previous lectures now the second category of shock is the cardiogenic shock now cardiogenic shock is caused by any condition which disturbs the pumping of the heart which leads to disturbance in pumping of the heart and the most common causes which lead to cardiogenic shock are myocardial infarction especially acute myocardial infarction heart failure arrhythmias in which the heart rhythm is disturbed the pumping pattern of the heart is disturbed and valvular dysfunction in which the heart is normal the pumping is normal but the blood cannot properly flow out of the heart or it cannot come back to the heart because of the abnormalities in the valves so in myocardial infarction the blood flow to the heart muscles is disturbed in heart failure the heart fails to pump due to some problem either due to uh, a massive myocardial infarction or due to abnormality in the heart muscles in the arrhythmias the rhythm the heart rhythm is disturbed either the atria contract prematurely or the ventricles cannot properly contract and in valvular dis dysfunction there is some problem in the valves which will not allow proper movement of blood now in this type of shock in cardiogenic shock there is decreased cardiac output due to which there is a uh, cold and clammy skin because there is systemic vasoconstriction again the the, the tissues are not receiving proper amount of blood because there is some disturbance with the heart the heart is not that's why it is called cardiogenic shock because the problem is in the heart and the shock is due to the abnormality in the heart so there is decreased cardiac output decreased decrease arterial pressure which leads to increased vasoconstriction which ultimately increases the systemic vascular resistance or the afterload is very high just like in hypovolemic shock because the bodies think that there is loss of fluid the tissues think that there is they perceive it as a loss of fluid or loss of plasma so the sympathetic system is activated which causes increased vasoconstriction increased systemic vascular resistance increasing afterload and decreased supply of blood to the peripheries which leads to cold and clammy skin now Now, the PCWP or the preload or the amount of blood that is returning to the heart it may be high or normal in hypovolemic shock it is low because there is less fluid in the system a lot of fluid has been lost blood has been lost but in cardiogenic shock there is no fluid loss the fluid is in the system but there is some problem in the heart so depending upon the type of problem in the heart the PCWP the preload may be high or it may be low either of them but the cardiac output is low the cardiac output is low because the heart cannot properly pump the blood so cardiac output is definitely low and the systemic vascular resistance is definitely high and the treatment may be either diuretics in heart failure or it may be ionotropes in valvular uh, in uh, myocardial infarction or the treatment options are many in myocardial infarction heart failure arrhythmias depending upon the type of uh, in valvular dysfunction surgery may be sometimes needed uh, so depending upon the type of problem in the heart cardiogenic shock can either be treated with ionotropes or diuretics or any other um, drug which will treat the arrhythmia so the treatment options are many now in obstructive shock what happens is the heart is normal 
the blood volume is normal but there is some obstruction to the flow of blood so the example is the causes of the cardio the obstructive type of shock are cardiac tamponade in which some pressure the some pressure basically does not allow the blood to return to the heart there is fluid collection outside the heart there is fluid collection outside the heart for example this is the heart now outside the heart there is collection of some fluid or blood which will press the heart and it will basically press the heart so much from outside that it will not allow the blood to return back into the heart so this type of uh, this condition is called cardiac tamponade and pulmonary embolism now pulmonary embolism is a condition in which a thrombus is thrown out a thrombus is thrown out and it basically obstructs a blood vessel so uh, blood heart can pump the blood but there is some obstruction there is some obstruction in the blood vessel so blood cannot pass uh, after this uh, block so this is one condition pulmonary embolism and then tension pneumothorax tension pneumothorax is because there is collection of air outside the lung now this air basically presses the heart and it is it is causing so much pressure that this and this is an emergency condition it occurs in uh, road traffic accidents or uh, any accident so this type of condition also can obstruct the flow of blood because the air outside basically comes into the pleural cavity and it is in it is causing so much pressure that this uh, lungs the, the 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 mediastinum basically shifts and the it can apply a lot of pressure on the heart and it can block the return of blood or the flow of blood so all of all these types of conditions can basically obstruct the movement of the blood the cardiac tamponade the pulmonary embolism the tension pneumothorax they they all cause the obstruction of the blood movement so they also basically lead to cold and clammy skin they also lead to cold and clammy skin because the tissues are not receiving the blood cardiac output is very much low cardiac output is very much low so it basically leads to intense activation of the sympathetics which again leads to systemic vascular resistance and increase afterload in cold clammy skin so these three conditions the hypovolemic shock the cardiogenic shock and the obstructive type of shock will have cold clammy skins skin they will have low cardiac output and they will have high systolic uh, systemic vascular resistance or high afterload now the the preload the preload or the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure the pcwp may or may not be uh, decreased in the obstructive shock is there is problem in the uh, in the, there is no problem in the pumping there is no problem there is no volume loss of blood the amount of blood returning to the heart is normal but it cannot properly enter or it cannot properly go out or it cannot properly uh, uh, go to the tissues so otherwise the system is okay the heart can pump normally the the the, the vessels are normal the amount of blood is normal but some kind of pressure is not allowing proper movements so depending upon the cause the the preload may either be increased or it may be decreased but the cardiac output is definitely decreased and the systemic vascular resistance is definitely increased and the treatment is basically to relieve obstruction now in tension pneumothorax a needle must be a needle must be put here to remove the air outside and this system will be resolved in cardiac tamponade a needle will be put in here and the the the, the fluid or the blood should be aspirated out and it will relieve the obstruction similarly in uh, pulmonary embolism uh, this thrombolysis an injection should be administered administered which will dissolve this clot with which is known as thrombolysis and this will basically solve the problem so relieving the obstruction by relieving the cardiac tamponade or uh, treating the pulmon uh, the tension pneumothorax in emergency and similarly thrombolysis in pulmonary embolism all of these are the treatment options in obstructive type of shock now the final type of shock is the distributive type of shock which occurs in sepsis and the phylaxis or cns injury now we discussed in our previous lectures that uh, sepsis is basically the spread of infection throughout the body and the phylaxis is due to release of histamines and it is basically an immediate or hyper uh, immediate type 1 hypersensitivity response and cns injury can basically cause decreased sympathetic uh, decreased or depressed sympathetics now the difference is that in the sepsis and in the anaphylaxis the skin is warm the skin is warm and the body is flushed because there is vasodilation there is vasodilation in these uh, types of shocks there is systemic vascular resistance increased the vessels are constrict the vessels are constrict to basically uh, the purpose is to divert the blood flow towards the heart but in these conditions in the sepsis in the anaphylaxis and in the cns injury the tone of the blood vessel is lost the tone is lost so the systemic vascular resistance is very much decreased now this is a difference this is a very much important difference now the systemic vascular resistance is decreased not increased so there is blood flowing to the periphery there is blood flowing to the periphery even though the body the patient is in condition of shock but blood is flowing so the skin is warm in sepsis and anaphylaxis and it is dry in cns injury so because the, the systemic vascular resistance is not increased 
it is not constricting rather the blood vessels are dilating they are allowing more blood to flow so resistance is decreased and the skin is very warm the skin is very warm and similarly the cardiac output does not decrease in sepsis the cardiac output does not increase and this in sepsis we discussed that sepsis basically increases the metabolism increased metabolism is also responsible for warm skin and it is also responsible for high cardiac output and it is also high responsible for decreased systemic vascular resistance not increased but but you have to notice that the preload is decreased. The preload is definitely decreased in sepsis and aphylaxis as well as in the CNS injury. But if you talk about the cardiac output, cardiac output is high in sepsis and anaphylaxis, but in CNS injury, the cardiac output is decreased. In CNS injury, the cardiac output is decreased. Now, depending upon the cause, IV fluids or epinephrine or pressors can be given to correct the cause. So, this is one very important uh, type of shock which must be distributed, uh, sorry, differentiated from others. And this is the distributive type of shock. It can be either due to sepsis or anaphylaxis or CNS injury. And in this type of shock, the skin can be warm or dry. In CNS injury, it will be dry. In sepsis, it will be warm. And the systemic vascular resistance will be low. It will not be high. And the cardiac output will be high in sepsis and anaphylaxis. It will not be low. But it will be low in CNS injury. And similarly, the, the, the preload will be low. It will not be high. It will never be high. The preload will be high low but the cardiac output will be high the metabolism is high the metabolism is high but there is vasodilation there is vasodilation here in hypovolemia there is loss of fluid from the body due to blood loss or fluid loss due to which due to which the amount of blood returning to the heart is decreased so the preload is decreased the pcwp is decreased but in distributive shock in sepsis there is vasodilation the blood vessels dilate so there is pooling of blood there is pooling of blood the blood cannot return to the heart so again the pcwp is decreased the p the preload is decreased but the uh, the cause in both the cases is different so that's all uh, that's basically a summary of all types of shocks that they are the causes of different types of shocks the the uh, the the appear and the sorry the the uh, the different types uh, sim sign symptoms of different types of shocks and the different treatment options available for uh, these types of shocks thanks a lot for watching the video